Ladies and gentlemen and ninjas, welcome back on the African Geek Down with Allow me to reintroduce myself. My name is Aina Yaman JP. We are here today to review June Part 2, one of my most anticipated movies of the year. I'm a little late to reviewing it. Forgive me. I've been of poor health lately and also procrastinating. And I'm also here to prove to you that I am, in fact, the Lisan Al Gaib himself by using my powers of prescience to predict that this, that this will be one, if not the best science fiction movies of the year, hey, of the decade, Disney's been fucking up Star Wars. Amen to June. How the fuck you let Warner Brothers run up behind your back and shank you when you own Star Wars? Disney, y'all, y'all gonna have to explain this for me. Lord God. Y'all playing too damn much, man. So, without any further ado, grab your coffees and let's get cracking with this review. Let's see if it's worth a piss. I will love you as long as I breathe. This prophecy is how they enslave us! It's not a prophecy. It's a story. I don't care what you believe. I believe. I am Paul Mordi Atreides! Duke of Arrakis! Under the blue sea, Azanta! He who can destroy a thing has the real control of it. June part two. How long have we been waiting for this? I loved the first movie. I thought it had shortcomings. I agree that it was slow, a bit boring. I did not expect everybody to like it. But it was a damn good movie, a damn good piece of science fiction, and it had Jason Momoa in it. Mm -hmm. Villeneuve uh, has been slowly rising in the ranks as a director, and to me, after watching, most people uh, think his best work is uh, Sicario. For me, it was Prisoner and uh, Arrival. I love those two movies. Sicario for me was a big, you know, didn't like it that much, did not find it that impressive. But with June, it's like the man's been waiting his whole life to make this happen. And it shows there's a genuine love for this story, this book. And right up front to me, this was great. One of the best uh, uh, science fiction movies I got to see in the theater since uh, Rogue One. Star Wars Rogue One and maybe Infinity War. It's on that level, if not higher. I think I might go watch it again this week and I've not had a second showing of anything in the cinema for a long time. I've never bothered to go watch a movie twice in the cinemas. This, that, this, this one might be it, people. And like I said, right up front, I ain't gonna hide it. I will give this the rare uh, 10 out of 10. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You're goddamn right. And on my shaggy scale, this one is a Mr. Bombastic. Mr. Bombastic! You can log off right now but i'm gonna say i give my score front doesn't mean i thought it was perfect it's damn near perfect but everybody's gonna have a their opinion i have mine because uh unfortunately i read the book and i'm fully aware of the changes that have been made and some of these changes annoyed me number one i'm gonna list them off number one being paul and chani's son wait you know what please reverse number one would be the accelerated uh timeline because that does not give space for the birth of paul and chani's son that everything comes down to the accelerated timeline the this war that uh, muadib was fighting with the fremens took years if not a decade before it got they managed to get the emperor to come to doom uh, but in typical hollywood fashion we gotta move fast we gotta move fast 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 gotta keep the action going people thought the first movie was boring i don't know if they need to have got some studio notes uh to accelerate the timeline but we could have still had the same level of action and pacing just by showing that a few years had passed didn't have to show much just the birth of the child and the kid being a little bit older and that kid actually died during the attack on Sich Tabor where the Cheney and her people 
and still God will actually locate it where they live. I think it would have precipitated all into drinking worm piss and his motives would not have been in question from for drinking the waters of life. You understand me? That the son's death could have been used as the motivation, the catalyst for him going to, uh, to the south and drinking the waters of life. For that question, that would have cut down also on the friction with Chani she would have supported it, as she kind of did in the books, if I'm not mistaken. She was always a little bit hot and cold. She was totally in love with him in the books. None of this uh, antagonism. They had differences in opinion. They were a couple, but because of their son's death, uh, she was like, yo, let's fuck him up. And I do believe the son's death also occurred during the la final battle. But if you're going to switch things up, just switch things up. Use his son's death as his reason for wanting to drink take such a gigantic fucking risk out drinking the waters of life which could have killed him so the third issue i have is the birth of alia alia wasn't born although i get that uh, her not being born was used to great effect actually a bit of a horror movie thing where uh, the fetus possesses the mother and is influencing things uh, as she's still in the belly and yeah it was kind of that had a horror movie element to it but i think Alia as a character, it's a creepy little fucking thing. I think she was, she was five. She had all her cognitive abilities. She could see the future. She could speak. She wielded a knife. She's the one who kills Baron Harkonnen. I guess you didn't want to see uh, the modern Hollywood does not want to see child murder on screen either in either direction. That is Paul's child getting killed or little Alia murdering her granddad. Her grandfather? Yeah, I do believe Baron Hakkonen would be, yeah, would be her, her grandfather. And that's the least of the gripes that I have. The, my fourth issue would be the portrayal of Leji uh, Jessica. In the books, yes, she did try to influence events, go the Fremen into following Paul out of necessity. They need the Fremen to get shit done. But here, she she's portrayed out kind of like looking down on the Fremen. As she manipulates them, she looks down on them thinking they are weak or they're scared of her. I f I didn't like that. She seemed more of kind of like an antagonist, uh, an antagonist to Cheney even. Where in the books you could simply understand that she was an unwilling participant in igniting this jihad. Yes, she wanted uh, to start the war, but it was only uh, to protect her son and the life of her unborn child. She knew it was the only way forward because the Harkonnens would not stop hunting them. And even as they lived among the Fremen, if they thought them dead, they wouldn't stop hunting the Fremen. So something had to be done. But here she's portrayed as being a little bit more antagonistic and uh, I guess you need an antagonist. But to me, the Baron Harkonnen was enough. So that's it with my negatives on this movie. But they don't really affect my scoring because 10 out of 10 as far as I'm concerned and a Mr. Bombastic deal with it. Timmy Charlemagne, I did not see the point of him. I told y'all I don't like this actor. But he acquitted himself well in the role of Paul Atreides in June Part 2. He grew on me. Zendaya, Zendaya, Zendaya. People like her for whatever the fuck reason. I guess everybody fantasizes about her being their girlfriend. I don't know. I, got, I have a woman so I'm happy so I don't have those fantasies. Maybe if I was young. Maybe Hedy Berry. Don't tell my wife I said that. And yeah, as far as my MVP for this movie, it's kind of hard. That's what she said. <laughs> it is a tie, actually, between Javier Bardem and Austin Butler. Another actor who I didn't, couldn't give a fuck about. I didn't even watch Elvis. I'm not really a fan of these uh, musical biopic things. I, that's not for me. Last one I watched was Bohemian Rhapsody, but that's because I like Queen. Not a fan of Elvis. Blasphemous, I know. I'm not gonna state the reasons for that. Should be bloody obvious. But Austin Butler as Fade Rafa acquitted himself very well truly a god's damned menace cannot be denied Javier Biden as Tilga was kind of hilarious I'm not gonna lie the although the portrayal of Stilga in this film seems to be a bit more on the fanatical side than it was in the books he wanted Paul Atreides as the Zan Al Gaib he wanted the Mahdi uh, and the prophecy to come to fruition but he was also willing to call Paul out on his bullshit when he had to he was a commander he believed in the boy but you know he's a senior here so what's next is now we just wait for the sequel for June uh, 
June part two, which should be the book June Messiah, which is a lighter book, uh, a lot less pages than the first June. And there were the other changes made in June part two. By the way, the opening, that the action sequence uh, with them uh, being hunted by the Harkonnens, I don't really think that was really portrayed in the book. I don't remember that sequence in the book, but it was great that that was in there because it helped with the pacing and was, and that that is how you open a movie. Be fair, since your first movie was has the accusation of being called slow, yeah, open with an action sequence with the feminine being straight up. She's no beast, and I appreciate that. And uh, also, as I had predicted though in my trailer reaction that they were going to put some emphasis on Paul's relationship with Chani, given what happens in the third act with Princess Ariel. And if you know, you know, they did. And I did not, I actually did not find it annoying. It was handled tastefully and well done. Danny Villeneuve, can't believe I didn't trust you with that. So now, like I said, for June Messiah, they're going to have to make some changes because that will be classified as fucking slow. It's not a science fiction action epic. It is more of a thriller. And spoiler alert for those who did not read the book. <coughs> this is within the first few pages of the book. This is the reason why they cast Jason Momoa as Duncan Idaho in the first place. It should be the first few scenes of the movie where there's a conspiracy to destroy Paul Atreides and yeah the war did not go well or it went well it went well for Paul but he's viewed as a tyrant yeah as it is shown as end at the end of June part two the Fremen are going after the houses the great houses and what it's not shown is that they do not stop they follow these guys to their home worlds and eviscerate and conquer and kill and there's a goddamn feeding frenzy so everybody's terrified of paul and now there's a plot to remove him and they do so by cloning something it's called a gola a clone of duncan idaho jason momoa's character has introduced and it is so frustrating as this is introduced within the first few chapters and he is given to Paul Atreides as a gift. And you know that there's some form of programming and Paul knows there's some form of programming introduced into this guy's brain. And he's going to be a problem and you guys already know and Paul knows but he's attached to the thing. And I've spent a whole fucking book to kill this fucking thing. Just, just kill it, just kill it. Just kill it. What are you doing? More deep. <sighs> Apologize. Yeah, uh, June Messiah, the second book, which will be the third movie, is more of a taut political thriller with intrigue, a will he want he. Oh yeah, and then Alia falls in love with this Gola, Duncan Idaho. So we double fucked. What the fuck happens next? You have to find out when the movie comes out. Yeah, watchers. Yeah, I'm excited. I they're gonna have to add a few action sequences, I think, in June Messiah. That won't be hard. Uh, then he has a scene to have a, a good team of writers working with him. Change a few things around. Yeah, I have full confidence and I'm fully aware that changes have to be made. Yeah, adapting anything, changes have to be made. And that is fine. It's a movie, not a book. People have less patience with movies. They want the payoff. So let's see what happens on the African Indian Geek Dumb. This has been me, your man JP. Thanks for your time. Thank you for clicking on my face. I appreciate it. Please leave the like and subscribe. Live long and prosper. May the force be with you. May the odds be ever in your favor. Wakanda forever, my ninjas. I'll catch you on the next one. Show wing. Everybody.